quantitative energy problems. I'm going to work through three problems in this worksheet. Each problem has got a heating curve already drawn, which you need to do in your notebook. And we're also going to identify which part of the heating curve we're dealing with. These constants over here are for the five different parts of the heating curve. They can be found in your reference table. The very first page of your reference table has them there. Two of them are called heats of fusion and heats of vaporization, and then we get different numbers for the specific heat, whether we're talking, with, uh, talking about solid, liquid, or gas, water. So let's look at the first problem. It says a cup of coffee cools from 75 degrees Celsius down to a comfortable room temperature, 20 degrees Celsius. How much energy does it release to the surroundings? So I've already highlighted the part of the heating curve we're dealing with there. That's the liquid part. And they're saying the water is going to cool down from 75 to 20 degrees Celsius. So we're definitely dealing with that part over there. Because, uh, you know, the, the bottom plateau is at zero and the top plateau is at 100. So the number that goes with that is called the heat or the specific heat of water as a liquid. And there it is, 4.18 joules over grams degrees Celsius. So we're simply going to write it down, 4.18 joules over grams degrees Celsius. We're going to multiply that by the grams, 140, and the change in temperature. The temperature goes from 75 to 20. That is a change of 55 degrees Celsius. Now you can see how the units cancel. Grams cancels, degrees Celsius cancels. And now we just simply multiply those numbers together. 4.18 times by 140 times by 55. We want two significant figures. And if I round the number in the calculator to two significant figures, we get 32,000 joules. Easy. The second question. Suppose, a volleyball practice, suppose during volleyball practice you lost two pounds of water due to sweating. If all of this water evaporated, how much energy did the water absorb from your body? Express your answer in kilojoules. We're dealing with the top part of the heating curve, the top plateau where vaporization occurs. That number is in your reference table. It's 2,260 joules over grams. We don't need to worry about a temperature change because we on a plateau. So let's write it down, 2,000... 260 joules over grams. Now we simply have to multiply by the grams. And in this case, the grams of water that's evaporating. They told us it was two pounds. So on the right here, I've set up a con conversion factor, one, gram, one kilogram over 2.2 .2 pounds. That's my conversion factor. We multiply that by two pounds. The pounds cancel. So two over 2.2 .2 gives us 0 0.91 or 910 grams. So I'm going to multiply that by 910 grams. You can see here that the grams cancel. So now we're going to do 2,260. And we're going to multiply it by 910. And if I put that into two significant figures, it's 2,100,000 joules. They said put it in kilojoules. A kilogram is a thousand grams, the kilojoule is a thousand joules. So if I had to put that in kilojoules, I'm just going to divide that number by a thousand, which is 2,100 kilojoules. Number three. Number three, we're dealing with the, the middle part of the heating curve again. The number we're working with is the 4.18 joules over grams degrees celsius the question says suppose that during the icy hot lab that 65 kilojoules of energy were transferred to 450 grams of water at 20 degrees celsius what would have been the final temperature of the water so this time we have to find temperature we have to find the final temperature they gave us the the joules of energy but we're going to set the problem up in the same way um, but our unknown is going to be different so we've got 4.18 joules over grams degrees Celsius. We're going to multiply that by 
450 grams. And the next thing is our change in temperature. I'm going to represent that as delta T. We don't know what it is. They told us, though, that the energy was 65 kilojoules, which is 65,000 joules. We don't want to work in kilojoules. We need to work in, in, in joules. So I needed to convert that to, to joules. So I'm going to solve for T. So what we're really going to do here is the change in temperature equals 65,000 over the 4.18 times by 450. Um, and you can see that is joules. That is joules over grams. That's grams. So grams are going to cancel. Let me just show that. Grams will cancel. Uh, the joules will cancel. And we're going to be left with um, degrees Celsius because it's 4.18 joules over grams degrees Celsius. So if we put all of that in the calculator and we put it and we round it to two significant figures, it's going to be 65,000 divided by, I'll open my parentheses now, 4.18 times 450, close my parentheses, and I get 34.556. I want two significant figures, so that's 35 degrees Celsius. That's not the final answer, though. The question is said, what is the final temperature going to be? So if it changes by 35 degrees Celsius and we, we are transferring energy to the water, so it's going to go up by 35 degrees Celsius, the original temperature is 20 degrees. So we're just going to say 20 degrees plus the change of 35 degrees Celsius, and that's going to get us 55 degrees Celsius. So that's how you do these problems. Find out which part of the heating curve you're dealing with. Choose the appropriate constant that you need to work with, which is on the, the front page of your reference table. We can also see it here in a heating curve. And if you know what constant you're going to work with, you will know how to start the problem off.